Well, let's bring in the Shadow Minister for Industry and Innovation, Ed Husick. Ed, good to see you. So just off the back of those comments right, from Pete. Josh Frydenberg, I'll repeat them again. Being part of Global Targets is in Australia's interest. You can't really say that and then not commit, right? Well, I think uh, we just can't have a, uh, a sort of eureka moment out of Josh and um, uh, deny what we've known uh, in effect for years. I mean, uh, state governments have got it around net zero. State governments have got it. Business and industry have got it. Uh, our trading part partners get it. The science compels us to take this issue seriously. And the only ones that haven't have been the coalition, the, the party room there, led by a bloke who thought it was a great political idea to wave a chunk of coal in the parliament. And boy, that's that footage has aged well. And Josh himself, who was talked out of talking up electric vehicles and had to drop the clean energy target and the national energy guarantee. So we need to go beyond the talk. We need to be able to see seriously uh, a, a definition or a declaration by the government that they are going to move to net zero. Labor has been saying this for ages, net zero by 2050, to start getting us moving in the right direction. But that has to involve coal, though, doesn't it? I think you need to have uh, a you know discussion around where energy will be generated, how we will be generating that energy, and what the effects are, and working with with people on that. Coal will still have a part to play in the foreseeable future, but what is happening is uh, an uptake of renewable energy generation that the coalition have sought in effect to politicise from time to time and make out to be the demon, and they've uh, also, as you've noted. Uh, in your lead-in commentary around the reflections on capital markets, I mean, they this coalition has browbeaten banks, they have browbeaten investors, they've uh, browbeaten superannuation funds, uh, all this having the effect of, uh, I would liken to blowing raspberries at the tide. This has been coming for a while. I mean, George Christensen earlier in the year wanted to run a parliamentary inquiry to haul in the banks to say why they're not prepared to invest in coal. And the reality is the world is changing and it's only been the coalition that has dragged their feet on this. Matt Canavan uh, has tweeted this morning, he said that global banks oh, yeah. that want to control who has a job in Australia should be locked out. The higher cost there you go. is worth protecting independence. I mean, that's an idea of some of the interference uh, that the government is, is having to, to deal with. Totally. I mean, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is a feral coalition party room, uh, again, that had egged on uh, Scott Morrison, you know, waving his little chunks of coal. I mean, you know, Scott Morrison should grab with his right hand that chunk of coal and declare he is committed to net zero by 2050. It looks as though you know, that's coming, that, though. It, it looks as though egg, it's coming. Exactly. And right. uh, I think that is a reality. And, you know, if you look in the... And I, I, I think the bigger thing here, Pete, is this, in terms of the way that the coalition has politicised key decisions, made them a political battering ram, and look, look at the last 12 months. It was about 12 months ago now that they backed down on the NBN and basically mm. declared that they would do what we had been arguing for ages. Do, do Where's you think the talk it's on debt and deficits? Hang on, hang on. Yep. Wait on. Where's the talk on debt and deficits, right? Uh, that's gone too. And now we've got this. And what, what this means is we have lost a hell of a lot of time, divided the community, not got our act together and look like a laughing stock on the international stage instead of strengthening our economy, protecting jobs, growing new jobs. They've always played games and their political games right now are coming back to bite them. Do you think the traditional industries such as mining and agriculture should be spared? Well, again, this is a thing that you need to do. If, you've, if you're serious about... Uh, reducing emissions, then you work with sectors that are likely to be affected and in conjunction with them, work out how to minimise impacts. So you, you need to have that, that discussion. But if you look at the mining sector, you've just mentioned yeah. there, they've taken this issue seriously. Yeah. A lot of them are committing uh, to net zero. Agriculture too. Some of the innovation I've seen in agriculture where they're actively looking at how Twiggy. they can reduce emissions, right? So... Yeah. So, so they get this. Business, as I said, you know, state governments get it, business gets it, trading partners get it, the only ones who don't are the coalition. Are you going to set a medium-term target soon? Well, unfortunately, we're not in government, so we have to see what happens at Glasgow and we'll wait and 
respond to what the government okay. uh, puts forward well, to the international community. Well, but we do think you need to have we, so, we do think you need to have a much more ambitious ambitious target to start that process of getting us to net zero. Well, Sharma reckons forty to forty five percent by twenty thirty five. What do you think? Well, he can pluck figures uh, out of the air and he can take that to his party room and see how he goes. I mean. Uh, ultimately, it's up to what the coalition, through Scott Morrison, puts on the table at Glasgow and commits to. Uh, and, you know, if he can drop the politics, uh, have a much more collaborative approach uh, and be genuine about it uh, is, is what's going to be required. But, I mean, you've already referenced comments from people like Matt Canavan and that that have talked themselves into a corner on this, and it'll be really hard to see how they'll be able to manage this within their party room. But right. I think... You know, longer term, this is really important to get right. Uh, instead of playing politics, let's just do what's practical and right for the economy. It does seem as though that Barnaby Joyce, though, is on board uh, with some of his comments in the past couple of days. So maybe he's been able to lasso everybody. Um, Ed Husick, good to chat. <laughs> good on you. you soon.